everybody. Good morning. And happy Palm Sunday. Welcome to the house of the Lord. So glad each one of you could be with us, and we're looking forward to a good time in the Lord. Amen? We're going to open with prayer this morning, and uh, I know that you have so many needs and so many things on your heart, and we'd uh, ask if you've got a need just to signify that by an upraised hand, and we're going to, we thank the Lord God knows them all. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and Ask the Lord to be with our time together. If you bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for how you've blessed us. We thank you for our service last week and how you just, uh, your presence was with us and the ministry of Kevin Spencer. And we pray that you would uh, just be with us once again. We claim the promise where two or three are gathered in your name. There you will be also. We pray you just help us in a mighty way. And Lord, that uh, chains would be broken, that people would be free from their sin and live in victory as they leave this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And this song, when it was written, was simply called Opening Song. And it's based on Psalms 42. It says, These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. Once again, we come to the house of God. Once again we come to the house of God To unite in song to praise To extol with joy our Redeemer's name And to tell His wondrous ways Born to the house of Lord with rejoicing we come For we know that we are Thine Worship thee in the Bible as the evening light does shine. In the days gone by, thou hast been our stay, thou hast led us safely on to the blessed light of the present day where the darkness now is. To the house of Lord with rejoicing we come, for we know that we are thine. We will worship thee in the Bible and as the evening light does shine. May our hearts, O oh Lord, ever united be in true fellowship. Thy will be done by us here on earth as thy angel holds above. To the house, O Lord, with rejoicing we come, for we know that we are thine. We will worship thee in the Bible. Prayers ascend as an incense sweet, and our praise accepted thee. As in gratitude, all our hearts overflow in a tribute unto To the house, O Lord, with rejoicing we come, for we know that we are thine. The Bible as the evening light does shine. Amen. It is Palm Sunday. As Jesus entered into Jerusalem, they waved palm branches and said, Hosanna in the highest. 
palms of victory. I saw a wayworn traveler in tattered garments clad and struggling up the mountain. It seemed that he was sad. His back was laid in heavy. His strength was almost gone. Yet he shouted as he journeyed, deliverance will come. Ooh. Palms of victory, crowns of glory, palms of victory. I shall win. The summer sun was shining. The sweat was on his brow. His garments worn and dusty. His steps seemed very low. But he kept pressing onward, for he was wending home. Still shouting as he journeyed, deliverance shall come. Then palm of victory. Crowns of glory, palm the victory, I shall wear then palm of victory, crowns of glory, palm the victory, I shall wear. I saw him in the evening, the sun was bending low, he'd overtop the mountain and reach the veil below. He saw the golden city, his everlasting home, and shouted loud, Hosanna, deliverance will come. Then palm of victory, crown of glory, palm the victory, I shall win. Then palm of victory, crown of glory, victory I shall win while gazing on that city just o'er the narrow flood a band of holy angels came from the throne of God they bore him on their pinions save for the dashing foam and joined him in his triumph deliverance had come then Paul a victory Palm the victory, I shall win. Then palm a victory, crown the glory. Palm the victory, I shall win. Then palm the victory, crown the glory. Palm the victory, I shall win. If we follow the Lord, we will have palms of victory when we reach the other side. And we can have victory on this side, too, if we follow Jesus. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They worshipped him as he entered Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday. The whole earth is filled or full of his glory. And this first line says, we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength All right, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, we're, we're supposed to sing the truth, right? Well, if we were to sing the truth right now, I'd have to change this. We sit down and cross our arms And our faces look mighty sour So let's try this. If God has saved you and you're happy to be in the vo in the house of the Lord today, holy is he. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and we worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. And together we sing. All right. Everyone sing, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, the earth is filled with 
with his glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renowned. Well, it's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renowned. And together we sing. the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, the earth is filled with His glory, singing holy is the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with his glory, the earth is filled with his glory, holy is the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Even when we can't see it, you're working. 
Even when we can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when we don't see it, you're working. Even when we don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Amen. He became sin. Who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness? He humbled himself and he carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus, Messiah. Name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, rescue for sinners, ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. His body the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out, all for love. The whole earth trembled, and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Above all names, blessed Redeemer, the man you will rescue for sinners, ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. All our hope is in you. All our hope is in you. All the glory to you, God. The light of the world. Jesus Messiah. Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. Jesus Messiah, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, man. 
from here Jesus Messiah Lord of all rescue for sinners ransom from here Jesus Messiah Lord of all. Father in heaven, we just worship you today. We praise you. If you never answered another prayer, you're still worthy of our praise. We love you. We thank you. And as we enter into this time of your word, we pray that you would be our teacher. Your Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us in all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And all God's people said... So thankful to be in God's house and to be able to worship freely. Amen. We are we still live in a free country where we can come and assemble together and freely worship. You know, uh, many times I don't know about you, but I do. We can take that for granted, can't we? Uh, but there are a lot of people today around the world that didn't get to meet like this and sing the songs of. Uh, of praise and worship like we do and, and to be able to gather together. And it's so good to be in God's house. We're, we've we been in a series all year about uh, going through the book of Acts called Mission Minded, where we're going to take a break from that uh, for just a few weeks for Easter. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to what God is going to share. We're going to be in the book of Luke today, uh, Luke and chapter uh, 19. So Luke 19. And uh, we'll be there for today. Again, it's so good to have all of you and, and so good to uh, be here. And um, You know, if you've grown up in church or you've heard the Easter story at all, um, you can kind of get too familiar with it, right? We kind of know what's happening. It's kind of like watching your favorite movie over and over and over. You can quote it. You can say the lines before they say them. Right? Some of y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. You know that you've done that, right? And you got friends that when you watch that movie with them, they don't like to watch it with you because you can say everything before they do. And it becomes familiar. It's still a favorite, but it's a familiar favorite. And it loses some of its pizzazz that you first uh, you first saw it uh, I remember one of my favorite movies uh, animated movies of recent years was the lion is the Lion King and I love it and I'll never forget going to the theater for the first time and seeing that opening scene where they you know the circle of life and he holds Simba up and I, I want to go home and start cracking mangoes and you know just to, it was awesome I'll never forget that but as I saw it over and over I kind of you know, it lost its luster, and then they made the live-action version, and they did it all again. And I was just like, wow, I missed some of that. And, and the, the wonder was restored. And, you know, there are certain times when we look at the story of Jesus and we lose some of the awe in it. And we need to look at it again with fresh eyes. In fact, sometimes there's little things in Scripture uh, and I don't mean any, uh, anything blasphemous by this, but the Holy Spirit sometimes works like my little dog Rudy works. Rudy is a little 10-pound chihuahua that has the heart of a Doberman. And one day, we couldn't find him. Now, there's not many places he can hide in our house, but we could not find him. And we're looking all over, and we're looking all over, and my, we're getting kind of concerned because we can't find him. We're hollering, Rudy! Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. And about that time, my wife says, I wonder 
if he's hiding behind the curtains. Rudy, Rudy, and then all of a sudden he just pops out of those curtains like, here I am. I've been here the whole time. Well, you know, many times when we look at Scripture with fresh eyes and we ask the Holy Spirit to come in and show us and we call out, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, teach us something new today. Teach us something new from your Word. He's there all the time and He just pops out and goes, Here I am. Look right here. And today we're going to learn from a donkey. And my dad said you can learn from anybody or anything. Well, today we're going to learn from a donkey. We're going to look at this story of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem through the eyes of this donkey and make some parallels today about how we can have a victorious life and how we can overcome in this life and how we can bring glory to God because that's our purpose. Did you know that? That's why we were created. We weren't created to get the most money. We weren't created to get a good job. We weren't created... Uh, just to meet up with our intended loved one and start a life together and a family. That's not, that's part of it, but we were created to bring glory and honor to God and to be in relationship with God. Now, sin messed that all up, but because of Jesus, when we accept Him into our life and we say no to sin and yes to Jesus and He changes our life from the inside out, then we have a relationship with God and our desire should be to glorify Him and to lift Him up. Glorify simply means to put Him in the proper place, to lift Him up, right? To glorify Him. And that should be our desire. And this donkey teaches us how to do that today. I know some of you are looking like, really? Yeah. So, Holy Spirit, teach us today. Luke 19, starting at verse 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before, ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering you shall find a colt tied, wherein yet never a man had sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they went, they were loosing the colt. And the owners thereof said unto them, why loose ye the colt? And they said, the Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they sat Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Father, bless the reading of your word. We look at this picture today and we see the people and we know what's going to happen. We know as we celebrate what is called Passion Week that Jesus is going to ultimately uh, be betrayed. He's going to have to go to the cross. He's going to die. Then He's going to be buried. But in three days He's going to rise again. And that's why we celebrate Easter. And the church says, oh, that was about half. So the thing is, the people are worshiping him as he's riding in as king. Now, it's fulfilled in prophecy that he wouldn't ride in on a horse like most kings. He rode in on a donkey. And they went 
to get the donkey. Jesus said, you'll find a donkey tied up. Go loose him. Go loose him. As we follow Jesus, there are times in our life that we may get tied up. If we're living in sin, and sin is basically doing things God says not to do. Right? Simple. If God said don't do it, don't do it. Don't try to dance around and find a loophole, just don't do it. Right? How many of you grew up with what you would consider somewhat strict parents? And if they said don't do something, you knew to do it, right? Now, I'm going to turn my back so I won't see nobody's face. But how many of you knew what to do and what not to do, but sometimes you tried to escape what to do and find loopholes? I'll let y'all just confess to one another. Don't be pointing no fingers. We do that. Why? Because we, until Jesus saves us, we all have a sin nature inside of us that wants to go automatically to the wrong. Why do you think most babies' first word is no? They automatically got something inside of them that just wants to rebel. Oh, they look all cute and everything, but they ain't nothing but a viper in a diaper. They got sin in them, but thankfully, if they die before they know better, Jesus doesn't hold that sin against them. Amen? Because you all know this, those of you that are parents, you know this. If your little darling does something wrong, but they don't know it's wrong, do you just automatically wear them out? You explain it to them. Now, if you grew up like I did, you get explained to, and then you say, we're going to still have to punish you for that. It wouldn't be as severe, but we learn right from wrong. But if I didn't know, I wouldn't be, that wouldn't be held accountable to me, right? So as we grow and mature, when we are sinful people, to follow Jesus, we got to be loosed from that sin. And then when we get saved, we can be free from sin, but there are still things in our past, there are still things in our lives that will try to bind us. There are bad attitudes, there are baggage. Woo! Yeah, some of us got baggage, don't we? That will try to tie us down to keep us from doing what God wants us to do. Oh, I know people that saved as saved can be but they got so much baggage in their life that they've not let go of that their middle name should be Samsonite. It's, it's a luggage company. Follow the joke. All right. I like, someone's like, Samsonite, what kind of name is that? But anyway, the point is what we can learn from this donkey is before he could be used for the purpose God had called him, he had to be loosed. And who was the one that shared the message of loosing? The followers. And me, because I'm a follower. Good job, Colby. But when we're a follower, we're to let the world know you can be loosed and set free. And we're to let ourselves know that stuff that's trying to tie us down, we can be loosed because Jesus said it doesn't hold me anymore when we give it to him. Right? But we get trapped in it. We get tied up in it. But Jesus said, go and loose it. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, one of the first things he told the disciples to do was take off his grave clothes. See, Jesus called him forth, and then the people took off the grave clothes. Jesus saves us from our sin, but we as the body of Christ have to help one another get over our messes and claim the blood of Jesus over people. You know, like... Brother Kevin Spencer sang last week, Lord, paint my mind with the blood of Calvary. Lord, paint our lives. Loose us and set us free. Well, Brother Brian, you know, 
I like my attitude problem. God don't. Well, I just don't know how to act because that's the way my mommy was and that's the way my daddy was and that's the way. But that's not the way God designed you to be. Right? When God frees us, he creates in us a new being and a new spirit. We're different. We're different. And as we walk every day saying yes to Jesus, he changes us. There's, I'm so thankful for that little song Joel Hemphill wrote probably 30 years ago now. He's still working on me. And he's still working on you. And every now and then we got to take evaluation of ourselves and say, Lord, if there's anything, just like David did in the Psalms, if there's anything that's tying us down, loose it. Loose it. And then they brought the donkey to Jesus, and Jesus sat on the donkey. And he rode into Jerusalem. Our purpose is to what? Glorify God. We need to let Jesus sit on the throne of our heart. Not drag behind. Not just be convenient when we pull him out, when we want him, when we get in trouble. But when people see us, they will see a broken person who has been lovingly and continually in restoration by the Master. That don't mean I'm perfect. That don't mean you're perfect, amen. It just means, God, you've surrendered your life to the Lord and you want to please Him and He's still working on you. Have you ever been somewhere, like a store when they're doing remodeling and it says, pardon our dust? Well, sometimes we need to tell people, pardon our dust. He's still working on me. I'm sorry for that little uh, dust up. I'm sorry for that little word. I'm sorry... He's still working on me. Now, I know of a store that they had something that was broke down and they just put a sign like that up and they never fixed it. They pardoned our dust. We're working. And they had dust for years. See, it's not, oh, pardon my dust and then I just keep doing what I've always done because I just can't help it. No, we say, Lord, loose me from this thing, right? Because we all get burdened down. But when we, when we let Jesus be on the throne of our heart, we can be free. Amen? Let me illustrate it for you. Let's say that this is us and this water is all the burdens and all the things that we carry. It could be sinful things. It could be just the things of life. And we try to carry them. Now, if I held this out here like this and tried to carry it, it'd get awful heavy, wouldn't it? If I held this out here and tried to hold it, it would get heavy, wouldn't it? Now, some of you are like, no, nah, I didn't know when you'd have alcohol hold it all day long. Yeah, right, you're in church, don't lie. But as we hold it up, it gets heavy, and there's a lot of burdens in our life that get heavy, don't they? And the longer you hold it, the heavier it gets. But Jesus said, Come all to me, all you are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So when we give it to Jesus, when we say, I don't need this, loose me and set me free, Here's the beautiful thing. Jesus sets us free, and we no longer have the junk, but we have something that's white and pure. You see? The Bible says, as white as snow, as white as snow. I'm thankful today, because Jesus can purify us, and then... We're free. We're not bound by that. We're not bound by those things. We're not bound by the sin and the burden because we say just like Jesus said, loose him and let him free. And then we become the vehicle that our corner of the world, our Jerusalem gets to see Jesus high and lifted up on our life. 
Now, there may be some, because guess who came? The old Pharisees, the religious people of the day. The high up at the ups. The church people of the church peoples. And they said, would you control your people, Jesus? I'm paraphrasing. Why are you letting them do this? You see, there are going to be people, when you start lifting up Jesus, they're not going to understand. And this might be some people that sit in, you, in church with you. I don't know, I don't understand why you're making that stand because, you know, I wouldn't say nothing if I was you. And then you got people that don't understand, that don't know the Lord, and they'd be like, I don't understand why you go to church all the time. I don't understand why you do this. I don't understand why you do that. I don't understand how you can uh, bang your hand with a hammer and not say a bad word. I don't understand that. It's because Jesus is on the throne of my heart. And my job is to lift him up. Does that mean I'm perfect? No. Does that mean when we mess up, he's there to forgive us and we keep riding? There's an old song that says, Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on to the heavenly home. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on to the heavenly home. My life is your chair hit my life? Is your chair hit my life? Is your chair hit right on to the heavenly home? See, our life should be the instrument that lifts up Jesus and people see him and praise him. See, we can learn a lot. First, we must be loosed and set free. We must make Jesus the king of our life every day. That doesn't mean that we don't get to do things we enjoy doing. Right? Right? When we put Jesus first, he opens doors to do things that we love. Yeah. Let me tell you something. God opens doors to things we never even dreamed of. Yeah. He not only gives us our needs, he'll give us a couple wants just because he loves us. Yeah. Yeah. I can't tell you the times that God has allowed me to do things that I sit back and go, how in the world did, did this little boy get to do this? How in the world did we get to do this? How in the world? Be, but God did it. God provided. Why? Because it's my heart. It's my desire to put Jesus on the throne of my heart and to lift him up every day. Do I do it perfectly? No. But it's my desire. And he will open every door for you. Oh, there's going to be some hard times. Trust me on that. Oh, you can ask my wife. I don't wake up every day hopping out of bed, singing a hymn, doing cartwheels. First of all, I jump out of bed and start singing. I sound like a cross between a dead cat and Johnny Cash. Johnny Cat. So, secondly, I can't do a cartwheel if you had a gun to my head. There are days when I don't feel good. There are days when I don't even feel saved. But thank God I am. And sometimes God got to give me a little attitude adjustment and loose me from my bad attitude or my hurt leg and go, hey, you're blessed to be alive, big boy. That's right. Lord, help me not to complain. Woo, help me not to complain. Woo, I'm saying it again, help me not to complain. Because people that have Jesus on the throne of their heart are not complainers. They're attainers. They keep walking toward the goal, which is heaven. And they keep their head lifted up to the Father, and they say yes to Jesus. That don't mean that every now and then they don't get their grumpy pants on. Some of y'all looking at me right now like you don't know what grumpy pants are, and you never wore them. Remember, you're in church. You shouldn't lie in church. Oh, every one of us got a pair of grumpy pants. Some of you have been wearing them so long, you don't realize they are. 
they just normal now. Lord, help my attitude. Help me because I'm supposed to be the throne for you. My heart is supposed to be your home. So help me to keep it clean, keep it pure, and keep it full of the joy that you provide me. I mean, I can't believe the things God has allowed me to do. And this is not bragging on Brian. It's bragging on God because there were doctors that said he'll never live. There were people that said, well, he'll never walk. There were people that said he'll never play an instrument. There were people that said, don't let him sing. Don't let him do this. Don't let him do that. And God said, forget all that. We were talking to somebody last night, and they asked me, said, where all have you lived? I said, well, I've only lived in three states, but I've traveled to some 30, it's somewhere between 32 and 36. I've lost count. Um, and then I've also traveled to other parts of the world that I never dreamed. I've got people in my family that have never left the county they grew, were born in. And they don't understand. But God opened doors. God opens doors when we allow Him to loose us, set us free. Not set us free to do whatever we want, but to be the throne room for Him. I'll close with this. I don't know if you've ever had the privilege of going to a middle school band concert. Anybody gone to a middle school band concert? Mm hmm. Have you ever gotten there a little early and sat down, especially if you had children? Because most people that go to middle school band concerts have to bring the children with them. So they have to be there early. And you sit there and you hear all the chaos. You ever been there when they're warming up? Woo wee! Sound like 14 goose. Geeses, gooses, geeses, gosses. I'll say it any way you want. Sound like 14 of them and one big old yellow cat under a rocking chair, all just squalling at one time. And then. <coughs> That feller steps up, taps that little stick. They all look down at their music and they begin to play in one accord and sound like heaven. Right? What changed? The master conductor took the stage. When every one of us allowed Jesus to loose us, set us free, and be the conductor of our life, the church will be the orchestra and play the beautiful music of heaven that everybody gets along because we got one goal, and that's lifting up Jesus. It don't matter if we're black, white, red, green, purple. We all get along because of Jesus. And there's beautiful music coming from the church, not just from the singers, but from our lives. And people say, hey, how did people in Chavez do that? Because of Jesus. Well, how did they all get along? Because I knew them before, and they couldn't stand the sight of one another. Now they're sitting in the same pew. How does that work, Jesus? Well, I know their mommy and daddy used to hate them mommies and daddies, and they used to shoot at one another and throw stuff at one another and set each other's house on fire. And now, why, they go to the same church? How's that happen, Jesus? The conductor changes our hearts and beautiful music will come from the hills of Zion because of Jesus. So let us all loose our lives into the hands of the Master and ride on with King Jesus on the throne of our heart. Amen and amen. Maybe God has spoken to you today. And I don't know what He said, but I know that He's encouraging every one of us to lift Him up and put Him first. To let him be on the throne room of our heart. And maybe today you've come in discouraged. Maybe today there's things you deal with all the time. And maybe you've even asked the Lord to take them and he's not. Paul asked God to take something from him three different times and he never would. 
But it kept Paul humble seeking God. And maybe your issue is to keep you humble to continually seek God because he knows if he takes it from you, you'll depend more on yourself than you will on him. So maybe today you need to just surrender. You maybe just you need to surrender. And say, loose me in this part of my life or that part of my life and set me free. If you're watching online today, whatever God has said to you, I would encourage you to let him have his way and will in your life.